What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and today is going to be a DIY video on how to build a leopard gecko rack. Let me get my tubs and I'm going to show you where we're starting with this. Alright guys, we're going to build one with seven shelves. It's going to be two tubs wide, so it's going to hold 14 tubs. Right here, I've got the 15 quart Sterilite tubs with the purple handle. And then right here is the 32 quart tub. This one has the green handles because they got it for Christmas at Target right now, but uh, these are the tubs we're gonna be using because the 32 quart is six and a half tall and so is the 15 quart. So this one you can fit in there sideways and the 15 quarts will fit in there front to back for two of them. So you can keep them in here like this or say you wanna put multiple females for a group colony or you just want you have a giant or a larger gecko and you want to keep it in the 32 quart tub you can put those in there as well so you'll be able to put seven of these in here or 14 of the 15 quarts or any combination of both so the first line of business is letting you know that we're going to be using a black expanded PVC foam sheet. It's a 48 by 96, four foot by eight foot sheet. And we're gonna be able to make this one rack out of that. The sides are not going to be solid. They're gonna be like the economy animal plastics racks that you can look up online. The back though, however, is gonna be solid. I've got a quarter inch sheet right over here that you can see, that's gonna go on the back. Our 15 quart tubs without the lids measure approximately 16 and 5 eighths to 16 and 3 quarters front to back. And I will be taking these latches off to put them into the, into the actual rack. So we've got 16 and 3 quarters on that one. Let's check this one as well to see if it's the same. We've got 15 and 3 quarters on this one. So this tub will set a little bit further back than the other tub. So we need to leave a quarter inch to dado in the back quarter inch piece. And then we need to leave a little bit more in the front so that your tub will fully slide in there. So I told you guys we've got 16 and three quarters here. We need to add a quarter for the back, dadoing it in. That'll be 17. And then we need just a little bit extra for good measure. So I believe I'm gonna make these shelves 17 and a half inches. I ran the first piece in at 17 and 5 eighths, adjusted the fence, now I'm gonna run it back at the 17 and a half because we had a little bit of a rough factory edge and I determined that it would be all right to do that with the amount of, uh, of the sheet here, it'll still work out. So let's run this through for the second time and then we'll cut our second piece and we'll get four shelves out of each of these pieces. Now that we have our two pieces cut, for our shelves, we need to determine how wide we need each shelf to be. And we only have 96 inches to work with, and we have the thickness of the saw blade. So never forget about the thickness of the saw blade. Most of these saw blades are gonna be somewhere in the range of an eighth or less thickness. You can use your caliper to sight that in. This one's just a little bit less than an eighth. So since this tub's gonna be sideways, and these tubs will be side by side. We're gonna put the tape on them here and we're only gonna need about 21 and a half inches to make these fit comfortably in there. But this larger one, we're gonna need about 23 and a quarter inch. So 23 and a quarter inch to get this one in there comfortably. And we're going to dado each one of the shelves into the sides that I just previously cut. So you need to figure out what depth your dado is going to be, 
Your material we're working it with is a half inch. It's actually 12 millimeters, which is a little bit smaller than a half inch. So make sure you calculate your measurements. I believe I will dado at an eighth or three sixteenths. So let me go over here and check this real quick, and then I'll let you know exactly what I'm gonna do. All right, guys, I've determined that these right here are about a sixteenth shy of a half inch. So I'm gonna make my dado three sixteenths. So that'll be three sixteenths on the left, three sixteenths on the right. That's three eighths of an inch. So I just told you that 23 and a quarter will make this shelf right here comfortable. But we've got enough material. Let's go ahead and use what we've got. So 23 and a quarter plus 3 eighths is 23 and 5 eighths. For good measure, I'm going to go ahead and make them 23 and 3 quarter. And that'll leave us with an inch left over that the blade can take up. So let's set our saw up and let's go ahead and cut those dimensions right now. All right, since we're going to be cross cutting and cross cutting is a little bit more dangerous, I went ahead and pulled our drop table over here so that the, these sheets are a little bit flexible and that'll give me just a little something uh, to slide that on and not get this caught up in the blade. Here comes the tricky part. We've got this piece right here left. We've got about 12 and 5 eighths left. And on the back side where the heat tape's gonna be, we're gonna make that wider than the front. So I believe since we've got, let's just say we've got 12 inches left. Let's say 12 and a half. So if we put four on the front, then we'll have eight and a half inches on the back. And that'll leave us a little bitty gap in the middle. I think that'll be the way that we go. And we gotta do a little math to see how tall we need the sides to be. So we're gonna have to figure out how far it is between each shelf and then allow the thickness of this shelf in there so that we can properly slide these in there. So I believe how we're gonna do that is we're gonna set the bins out right here on this flat table saw I'm going to take my shelf stock here and I'm going to set it on top of there. Now the table saw is going to act as the shelf underneath. This will act as the shelf above. So let's take our tape and measure up. And we have, this is a weird freaking tape. This is not like the one I use building houses. So we got six and five sixteenths there. All right. Let's also test it out on the larger tub just to make sure that it's exactly the same. Good Lord, this tape is crazy. It's got one measure on one side and one measure on the other. Six and a quarter. It's about a sixteenth of an inch difference, but we're going to go with the measurement on the larger tubs. Some people that build racks leave a small gap in there for the tub to breathe. It's perfectly fine to do that as long as the animal you're keeping in there can't get out. The geckos won't be able to get out and we will be drilling ventilation holes in these tubs so there is not a need for that gap but we will probably still leave a small gap so that the tubs aren't so hard to get in and out so let's do our math right here so i've already told you we're going to have seven slots we're going to make each one of these slots six and three eighths of an inch times seven slots okay and each of our shelves, we're gonna go ahead and say a half inch, and that'll allow us about a 32nd to a 16th extra. So half inch times, we're gonna have eight, eight of these, okay? And then also at the very bottom, we're gonna set it up like a bookcase, and it'll have like a baseboard top spot at the bottom where the sides go down past the bottom shelf so that your bottom shelf is not sitting on the ground. And I'd say we could make that three or four inches. You can make it whatever you want. Let's say four inches. So that'll be another four inches that we're gonna add on the bottom. So we've got six and three eighths times seven areas. 
That's 44 and 5 eighths. We've got our half inch pieces. There's gonna be eight of those for our shelves. So we'll have seven shelves in the top. So that makes eight times half inch is four. And then the bottom down there that I was just telling you about, that's gonna be another four inches. So that's gonna equal 52 and 5 eighths inches. So that's what our sides will be cut and then we'll rip them down to the two measurements I told you a second ago, the eight and a half and the four. And that'll be our sides. And then we'll be ready to dado everything. But I think it might be wise to dado all this stuff before we rip it down. So we'll rip it, we will cross cut it to our 52 and 5 eighths, and then we'll go ahead and leave this wide and do all of our dados and it'll be more accurate. So let's try that and see how that runs. So we're gonna set this up right now and rip that to what it needs to be. All right guys, I'm uh, sad to say I'm about to admit something to everyone, but uh, this piece that I just cut here, it's only gonna make two pieces for the sides. It's gonna make a large piece for the back and a small piece for the front. So I just completely messed up because uh, it's it's not gonna be uh, it's not gonna be large enough. I don't you know this is 52. I would have had to make this 48 to be able to get the other two pieces out of this right here. So I have two options. I'm either gonna have to make this rack have less shelves, or I'm gonna have to go buy another sheet of this stuff right here. So give me one second to think about this and take a few measurements and let me decide how I'm gonna proceed. All right guys, so I've decided what I'm gonna do. Measures 43 and a quarter and I've got my layout put on here where I was testing it earlier. I'm gonna be able to get six spots on here instead of seven. We'll still be able to have 12 tubs, but we won't be able to have 14 tubs and the smaller piece at the bottom for that base I was telling you about, which is completely okay. So instead of having to spend over $100 on another sheet to make it larger like I originally calculated, we're just gonna take this piece right here and we're gonna go ahead and cross cut it to the same as that one and our rack will only be six shelves instead of seven. It's completely okay because what I'm trying to do today is build a rack out of one sheet to keep the cost down. So let's go ahead and cross cut this one. Hope we don't mess it up again. Okay, so there's our cross cut. Everything's good. We'll have one extra shelf to use, which is perfectly fine. We can use it on the next project because I'm sure that we'll be building another rack or an incubator. Uh, so let's go ahead and proceed. I'm gonna take this blade out and change to the dado stack so that we can uh, go ahead and get this thing ready to assemble.
What's up guys? I'm back. Day number two of building this rack. Sorry I had to leave you guys, but I had to go home, uh, get my son and my GoPro 10. The battery life is crap and it died. I didn't have the charger and an extension cord here to hook up. So we're going to continue today. I took my Dado blade out, put the regular blade back in. I think we saw that yesterday when I cut the shelves down to the right size. And now I'm gonna rip the sides down to my eight inch back part and my four inch front part. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to put the dado stack back in here and I've got to cut a three inch wide groove on here for the heat tape to wrap around to go to the next section. So let me cut the sides and then we'll be cutting that slot. All right, so I've made a seriously makeshift ghetto deal here, but I've got my next stop set up at three and an eighth inches, just a little bit of play in there so I can fit my heat tape through there. So we did a test run and it's gonna work perfect. Yeah. 
So there's what the uh, full dado is going to look like on it right there. And if I was smart and had my other blade in here, I would rip something and put a stop on this side and put a stop on this side. That way I could slide it over there and know exactly how far to run it through. But whatever, I don't have that. I'm just running five pieces, so 10 cuts on each side we're having to make here. So I'm just going to keep on doing it like this. But uh, as soon as I get this cut, uh, I believe we're going to look over what we've got here and we're going to start the assembly process. And the last piece I'll have to cut will be the quarter inch back, which will go on last. And one little strip that'll go under the front base and possibly the rear just for stability. So stick with me, guys. All right, so as you see in the background, I went ahead and put the top shelf together and the bottom shelf together. It's, it's pretty simple. I don't think I need to show y'all every step, but I will pull you in and show you this. But I did that just to make it more rigid and I could stand it up. And this stuff flexes pretty easy. It's a soft product. You'll see if you try this yourself. But next, I'm just going to install these shelves one at a time. I'm going to go ahead and pull the plastic off of them. And as far as scratches go, I don't think it really matters. Uh, that much because you know your tubs are going to be sliding in and out of here anyway so so what we'll do is we will just stick this guy in here just like this and it goes into the uh dado slots pretty easy and i'll pull the camera off of this tripod here in just a second and show you some close-ups of everything i'm doing but all i'm doing is just popping these shelves in here making sure they're lined up perfectly and shooting the screws through um and i'm just using like a i don't know if this is in focus or not but it's just like a sheetrock style th thread it doesn't have the super coarse threads but it's what we use here and then i bought some actually short screws which i'll show you to put the back on all you need to really do is just line these shelves up and then Take your drill here and when you get to the very last part you either want to use a hand screwdriver or you just want to turn your drill and just lightly tighten it up because you will run through this plastic or this uh, PVC whatever it is like there's no tomorrow and you definitely don't want to do that and I mentioned it earlier in the video, guys, but I'm going to do some more research and see if I can actually find a glue that will bond this stuff together, like a good glue that will bond it. And maybe once we get our heat tape, get ready for the heat tape or whatever, and figure out that it's going to work perfectly, we will glue it together as we screw it just to make it more rigid. Probably no reason to do that, but if you watch any of my other construction videos, you just know that's how I am. So let's continue doing this. Um, I don't want to bore everybody. And you also want to make sure you don't run your screw through where the uh, heat tape is going to be. But I'll be right back with you in a minute and show you some of the close-ups. So let me pull the camera off here right now and I'll show you some close-ups of what I'm doing all right as you can see this is this is really dirty from all the dust but here's all my slots right here that I was talking about and once that shelf goes in there it you pretty much can't even see it and what I was talking about is the down force of this shelf is going to be pushing down on the outside of this instead of only relying on the screws I know that's not a big deal but that's how I do it sometimes in cabinet making and you can see how the screws just barely sink themselves. I'm not pre-drilling this. I'm not telling you all not to do it. I'm just not doing it. And you know, before I put this thing too far together, I might ought to uh, slide one of these tubs in here and see if it fits. So you just have to make sure just to get this thing perfectly flush, then you can put your screws in and assemble it all. And once we get this thing cleaned up, man, I am going to be happy with this product. It's pretty sweet looking. All right, I've got my back piece cut. We just took the inside measurements 
and the long measurement here down to the bottom shelf and we cut this piece to perfectly fit in here and it's going to help uh, square up it's actually going to help square up the piece when we put it in there it's good and snug and it measures perfect square so it's going to help square up our shelf here and i've got some uh smaller screws that are going to go in the back here and i've already looked across my shelves to make sure they're all perfectly level none of them are bowed down or bowed up that way i can put a few screws across here so let me get my phillips number one bit since i have these smaller screws and these are like a number four by three quarter inch screw right here just a wood screw that i bought from uh the box store lowe's and uh i didn't necessarily need for them to be black you won't be able to see them but i thought about using a pan head screw instead of uh this type wood screw so that it wouldn't go down in there but uh it's just going to be a test just to see how they go so i think i'm going to start out with the bottom shelf down here and just see how it works out first all right so we want we want to have them in the shelf and in the sides to make it uh good and rigid yeah i believe that's gonna work i believe it's gonna work guys probably take quite a few of these to get it all all good if you knew you were never gonna take it apart again you could probably staple it but I'm not gonna recommend that and this is also gonna help keep some of the heat in the back and the open sides will kind of let it breathe towards the front of the container the cooler side but if I have a problem I believe I mentioned this earlier in the video if I have a problem up top with it getting hotter we can drill some ventilation holes to let the top ventilate a little bit more and we can separate the heat strips on the bottom three shelves from the upper three shelves since we have two channels on our thermostat i'll get into that in another video when we're setting up the heat tape but we can also do that but uh, that'll be for a later video all right so check it out guys uh, we're done with the rack. I'm gonna give you another walk around with the camera before I leave y'all today But let me just show you here's I've already removed the uh, purple handles from the stair lights And I'm gonna show you this too. I don't know if it's in focus, but it's the stair light 15 quart if you want the tubs and So I haven't bought all the tubs yet, but there they are right there and here you can see the big one it slides a little bit further back as we saw earlier in the video uh, because of the measurements of it but it'll slide back on that heat tape as well so anyways um, let's do a quick walk around before I leave y'all and uh, I want to show you the back of this thing and then we'll do the uh, exit to the video okay so here it is one more time let's see if I can get that in focus right there it's the stair light clear view latch 15 quart and the larger one now this is a stair light but it's just the christmas version for target it's the 32 quart typically has the purple handle has the green handle with the red lid from a target that's all they got right now but um so anyway look check that out i fixed the dados i took a little strip and glued it in there nobody will ever know that and let's swing around the back so here's the back on here i got quite a few screws in it um they call me the king of overkill so i just wanted to make sure that this thing was super stout and check this out i'm i mean it barely it's not going to move hardly at all i mean once it's in there it's not going to move so i don't even think that i'm going to put this bottom piece on here i've got scrap if i need to put it but i don't think i'm going to put it on there that concludes the video um, I want to say that I thank y'all for watching the video and thank you for bearing with me through all the crazy mathematics that went through my brain to produce this rack I know some of y'all are probably like oh my gosh this guy's losing me but you know just watch the video again and if you haven't already joined the family go down there click that subscribe button there's gonna be plenty more leopard gecko 
reptile, whatever videos on here, along with all the other crazy stuff I do, like fishing, construction, blah, blah, blah. But again, turn on those post notifications so you don't miss any more videos, and I will see you in the next video.